everyone, thank you for joining me today. If you follow me on Instagram, which you should, shameless love promo, I've posted several pictures of my studio on there. I have a few plants in here. So I received a few comments asking me questions about what kinds of plants I have in here and also how to take care of them. Actually, one of the most received comments I get, which are plant related, is something along the lines of, help, I really want plants, but I keep killing them. It's okay been there done that i thought i would make a video to show you guys a quick plant tour of all the plants that i have in the art studio and also offer some of my basic plant care tips uh, to help you keep your plants alive and not kill them you might be thinking lena this is a painting channel and i subscribe to you for painting so like why are you making a video about plants hold on let me explain <laughs> plants are actually a vital part of this art studio and a vital part to my art. To me, nature is the most inspiring thing in this world. And, you know, we've surrounded ourselves with walls and cars and buildings and shopping centers and <laughs> our society isn't very integrated with nature. It's kind of disconnected from it and it's also not very kind to it. Green is my favorite color and I love seeing trees, I love seeing plants, and just being surrounded by them makes me so happy. And I wish that I could just go hiking in a forest every single day or just live in a forest. But currently I'm playing the game of society and being a modern human, which unfortunately is a system that is very disconnected from nature. So my way of connecting with nature is by having plants, by taking care of them. Um, it makes me so happy. It kind of like fills a void. In the last few years, I have kind of spiraled into a plant black hole. These are just the plants that I have in the studio. I would say that most of the house plants we have are in this room, but I do have a few others scattered around the house. And then I also have uh, quite a few outdoor plants as well. I'm growing sunflowers, vegetables, shrubs, um, all kinds of things. I'm so sorry for this extremely long intro. I just felt like I had to get a few things out of the way. But uh, let's just start with this plant tour. And if you don't care about the plant tour, you're just here for the basic tips, just skip to this timestamp and you can just go straight there. And if you are gonna join me for the tour, Thanks. So in my work area, I have this little English ivy, which I've had for about a year now, and it's grown a fair amount. I recently transplanted it into a bigger pot, and it continues to grow. This plant does really well in shade and low light environments. It does not like full direct sunlight. Then I have a dark Pittsburgh ivy, which is very similar to the English ivy. The leaves are just a different shape, but caring for this plant is pretty much the same, and I'm going to have to repot it into a larger vessel pretty soon as well. This plant is an arrowhead or a nephthitis. It also loves to be in a shaded spot. It's grown quite a bit since I got it a few months ago and I also replanted it into a bigger pot recently. This plant from what I've read is actually very poisonous which I didn't know when I bought it and I'll actually get into that topic after the tour but for that reason I keep it on the highest shelf far away from everything and it seems to be loving it up there because it continues to grow. This is my golden pothos. It is my pride and joy. It's grown so much in the year that I've had it. I guess it's almost been a year, but you can even see in older videos what it looked like. And now it's got these long, beautiful vines hanging off the plant. And I just love it. I want more of them. I want these vines all over the studio. And I actually do have more than one pothos, not only in the studio, but also the rest of the house. This one is definitely my largest and oldest pothos. Uh, next, I have the Zamioculcus zamifolia. Uh, or the ZZ plant, which is much easier to say. Um, it's pretty easy to care for it. It won't suffer a lot if you forget about it. It likes the shade. It likes to have its soil dry out a little bit. So caring for this plant is super easy. Uh, next to the ZZ plant, I have another pothos. Then I have my rabbit foot fern, which is a new addition to my plant collection. We'll see how I do because I'm pretty new to ferns. I haven't had them before and I'm very nervous. I don't want to kill it. So I've been doing research on the plant and if you guys have a rabbit foot fern please let me know your experience or any tips you might have next to it i have a snake plant also known as the mother-in-law's tongue or its scientific name 
Sansa Vera, which sounds very beautiful. This is one of those plants that also thrives on neglect. You don't want to water it too much. I always make sure the soil is dry before watering. And this is a plant that my followers on Instagram recommended to me. So thank you. I love this plant. Next to it, I have another pothos because I love pothos and I have a bunch of them. Speaking of pothos, I also propagated a pothos. I took cuttings off of a plant and I put them in water and let them grow roots. And then I planted them into this pot and there's a new leaf that just grew in on one of the cuttings. And on the other cutting, a new leaf is forming and and it will soon also come out. Pothos are super easy to take care of and they're super easy to propagate. Then I have this cute little spiky succulent. I think it's called a Haworthia and my friend got it for me like two years ago, maybe a year and a half ago. It's like two Christmases ago. <laughs> Then I have my maiden hair fern. I learned about this plant a few months ago and I knew I just had to have it. I love the soft, delicate leaves and the tiny little dark stems. It just looks so delicate and beautiful. And I recently found it at a local nursery after searching far and wide. Um, this plant is a diva. It's not a good starter plant. You have to be very particular with its environment, which is partially why I got it because I wanted to take on the challenge. So I have it sitting in a pebble tray to increase the humidity, which it really Really likes. In nature, this plant grows out of rock walls. It loves humid environments, constant moisture in the soil, and it will die if you expose it to direct sunlight. And it also looked a lot worse when I got it. I snipped off some dead leaves and branches, and since then, it's it hasn't gotten worse. There is new growth coming in. I miss the plant every day, and I try to just leave it alone for the most part. It doesn't like to be touched or messed with, so hopefully I can keep this plant happy. Then I have a holly fern, which I impulsively bought. I didn't even know what the name was. It wasn't on the pot, weirdly enough. I had to do some plant searching online until I found ferns that looked exactly like it. So I'm pretty convinced that this is a holly fern. It came with some broken stems from the nursery, but I'm doing my best to keep this plant happy and hopefully it grows. This is my African Violet. I've had it for two years now. My mom got it for me as a birthday gift and it's really thrived in the last two years. It's bloomed about six times. It's currently blooming right now and I really love this plant. It does super well on a bright window with indirect light. And I also have a little leaf that I took off of it. It sprouted roots and pretty soon will grow a brand new violet plant. It takes a really long time to propagate violets but it's very rewarding. Then I have a little succulent leaf I'm propagating. This succulent leaf was in the dirt with a pothos I picked up recently, which is a strange place for it. So I thought I would do an experiment and see if I could get it to sprout some roots and grow a whole succulent out of it. So maybe I'll get lucky, who knows. Then I have my alocasia. It's definitely seen some better days. I was fighting a thrip problem on this plant, which unfortunately did a number on it, but it seems that I've gotten that under control. It's growing a new leaf, which is a great sign, and overall it seems to be doing well. So that's basically it for now, because I'm probably gonna get more plants. <laughs> Uh, just know that not all plants are safe for your pets. A lot of the plants that I actually have in here are considered toxic or poisonous um, to cats and dogs. First of all, my pets have no interest in my plants whatsoever. I've had plants the entire time that I've had Callie and she's never chewed on a leaf. She's never messed with it. Like she just doesn't care about them whatsoever, which I'm really lucky in that sense because if she did, I would have found out the hard way. A lot of these plants I actually acquired before I knew that they were toxic. I just kind of assumed that if it was such a big problem, there would be a label on the pots when you're buying the plants, but there never is. Um, when you get plants, like I've never seen a label that says warning plant is toxic to cats and dogs Like that's usually never there Which is strange to me because you would think like so many people have pets That's something that I discovered later on after doing a lot of research about the plants and trying to figure out how to care for them I also came across articles showing that they were not safe so none of the pets are allowed in my studio when I'm not in here the door is always closed not only for the plants, but there's a lot of other dangerous objects in here like scissors and razor blades and box cutters and art materials. So like the animals just really are not in here. And again, like my cat's really good about my plants. She's never messed with them at all. She never goes on the surface or climbs my workspace. She's just really good in here. So always do your research about them. If there's, um, before buying them, like if you look at the name, you can just Google it really quick before you buy it. I just kind of assumed that they were safe. So that's a heads up. Um, always do your research about plants. Congratulations on making it through my plant tour. If you did, 
Hopefully that wasn't too boring. So next I want to get into basic plant care tips and how I keep my plants alive. So a lot of times when you buy plants, they'll come with one of these things in the soil, just kind of stuck in the pot. And it will typically tell you its light requirements, the name of the plant, um, and then like some other facts about how much to water it, things like that. So I've actually found that Sometimes they don't always have the most accurate information. It all seems to be kind of generalized, but honestly, I think the most useful bit of information that these things come with is the name of the plant, because then you can just look it up and read so much more information about the plant in much greater detail. And also you can find personal experiences from people uh, who've had the plant and how they did with it. And that's pretty much what I do with most of my plants. I will always try to find more information online. So all the plants that I have in here are plants that thrive in low light environments. Basically, no direct sunlight, indirect light, which is what I have with my window. I never get any direct sunlight in there. That's my light situation. Uh, I have a white fence uh, in view in the window which actually acts as a reflector so it does reflect a lot of light back into the window and then I also have the open sky and the clouds which can reflect diffused light so I do get a fair amount of light in here but plants that need a lot of direct sunlight like certain flowers or succulents would not thrive in this environment so that's why I go for plants like the pothos or a snake plant or the zizi plant because they can actually thrive in the light conditions that I have here. So if that's your situation as well, those are some great starter plants. This is another one of my pothos plants and this is what I have uh, in the living room. This one isn't in my studio, but it's also growing quite long. It actually had longer vines, but I cut two pieces of them off because I wanted to propagate them and that is currently in my studio. I think pothos is a great starter houseplant. It's also funny to say houseplant because I don't think there is such a thing as a houseplant. It's just all outdoor plants that we've just started to breed and propagate indoors. It's just so weird that we call them houseplants because they all started outdoors. But anyway, this is a great starter plant that you can grow in your home. It will tolerate a variety of conditions. It likes bright light. It likes low light. It will pretty much survive whatever you do to it. I think in Florida, I read somewhere that these are considered an invasive species, that you shouldn't plant them outside because they will just take over and they'll grow to be like 40 feet long and they also flower, which you won't really see indoors because they never get that big. Lighting is obviously very important to plants. Their leaves need to photosynthesize the sunlight and turn it into energy and support their cellular functions. Speaking of cellular functions, plants also need nutrients. Just like us humans need nutrients, plants need them too. The roots of the plants absorb the nutrients, bring them to the rest of the plant, and it supports all their biological functions. A lot of people will have a plant that thrives, they find a happy spot in their home, they found a good watering schedule for the plant, and it will thrive and thrive and thrive, and then it just slowly starts to die, and people wonder what happened. Well, typically it's because it wasn't fertilized. I mean, sometimes it'll die even if you fertilize it, you might be doing something else wrong, but you need to feed your plants. Plants are all different, and they require different feeding schedules. Some require less nutrients than others. Pothos are one of those plants that will thrive without feeding for months. <laughs> that doesn't mean you should never feed them, but I've heard crazy stories of pothos being just neglected and given nothing but water and they just thrive. I don't know, it's a very interesting plant. But this one is a very basic fertilizer. It's a balanced fertilizer, which means there's an even ratio of nutrients. Um, typically on fertilizers, you'll find three numbers. This one says 10, 10, 10. First number is nitrogen. Then the middle number is phosphorus, and the last number is potassium. Nitrogen supports plant growth and building new leaves, new structures, and then phosphorus is more for blooming varieties like flowers. There's fertilizers for different kinds of plants. Some prefer a more balanced formula, others prefer a little bit less nitrogen, and if it's in bloom you want to give it more 
uh, phosphorus and potassium just to keep things simple this is one that you can start with and you can feed it to pretty much all your house plants although I will say you want to cut the does in half ideal for feeding all of your house plants each time you water mix an eighth teaspoon in one quart of water if you feed your house plants once or twice a month use a quarter teaspoon per quart of water. Plant fertilizers tend to be on the stronger side and a good rule of thumb is just to cut the does in half and do that. And you don't have to feed every single time you water. I never feed my plants every single time I water. Uh, what you can do with that is actually burn your plants. You can overfeed them and then their leaves will start to turn brown and discolored. Um, there's going to be an excess buildup of salts in the soil which will also prevent the plant from actually being able to feed. So it can cause all kinds of imbalances in the soil so you don't want to overfeed. I would honestly fertilize maybe once or twice a month and then give your plants water the rest of the time. You can feed an African violet with this, you can feed orchids, um, whatever house plants you have. So if you never feed your plant, eventually it will die because it will use up all the available nutrients in the soil and it'll die. And plants do need other nutrients, not just nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. There's also micronutrients like magnesium, calcium, iron, etc. But a lot of those are also readily available in the water if you're using tap water or like mineral infused water. Plants are all kind of different and some plants might be more sensitive to certain nutrients. Some plants might need more of another kind of nutrients, like tomatoes for example, love lots of calcium. So I also have to supplement my tomatoes with a CalMag nutrient formula. Watering plants is obviously extremely important. Um, different plants require different watering schedules. Part of the reason I like the pothos plant is because it does not need you to keep the soil moist. I think it actually likes it when you let the soil dry a little. Over time, you also get used to the weight of the pot, what it feels like when it's just been watered and what it feels like when it's dry. So you can sort of gauge if the plant needs water based on the weight of the pot, or you can like keep an empty pot of soil in it just so you can see the difference to compare with your plants. Um, just make sure that your pots have drainage holes at the bottom so that the plant isn't sitting in soggy wet soil because then it can get something called root rot and it will just literally rot and die. So try not to overwater your plants. It may seem so tempting to just water your plant every day and take great care of it, but there's lots of plants who actually benefit from letting the soil dry a little. You can just let the soil dry to about an inch or two, like check with your finger how dry the soil is, and then water the plant. Even if the pot does have drainage holes at the bottom, you can still give your plant root rot by overwatering it, by giving it water too frequently and not letting the soil dry out, so it's just constantly like wet and soggy and the roots won't be too happy about that. However, there are plants who love to have soil that's constantly moist, and that's the maidenhair fern that I talked about earlier. That one will straight up die if you let the soil dry out for even just a few hours. So stick with more simple, easy plants to take care of. Don't go into it, you know, with a specialty like exotic species that needs very particular conditions. If you start with an easier plant, um, when you do well with it, you'll feel a lot better and you'll want to get more plants and eventually once you gain some experience of taking care of plants and watching them grow and like you do quite well with them, then you can explore getting something a little bit harder to take care of. So I think that's where I'm at now. I have so many plants that are fairly easy to take care of and keep alive but now I want to experiment more with plants that are a little difficult so that's why I started getting some ferns and we'll see how I do with those. Uh, thank you to everybody who suggested this video because I had fun making it. I really love plants. That's the other thing is like don't just get a plant if you need the decoration in your home. Like if you're only getting it for decoration, just get a fake plant because if you're not actually interested in learning about the plant and if you're not enjoying taking care of it, if you think it's a hassle or a chore, uh, just don't get the plant. Get a fake plant because part of being able to take care of plants is you know, checking on them, and I think that's also part of the reason that 
Uh, I've been doing relatively well with most plants. I mean, I have had a few casualties, haven't we all? But I think I've found a good balance and most of my plants are thriving. And part of the reason is because I'm very excited about them. I love checking on them every day. I'm always like researching new information about them and trying to learn more and troubleshooting if I see anything off on a leaf like I'll search the internet and try to find out what's wrong with the plant so I can fix it. I genuinely love and enjoy taking care of them. It, I mean it's a living thing, it's alive. It needs to be cared for in order to survive and thrive. So if your only reason for getting plants is to decorate your home but you don't actually care about taking care of them or find that to be a hassle, just don't get real plants. I mean obviously I don't exclude the aesthetic part of it like that is important to me as well. I do love that I can decorate with plants but that's probably at the bottom of my priorities. I just like growing them. It's really fun for me. So thank you for watching and I hope this video was at least somewhat helpful or somewhat interesting and not horribly boring. Maybe it was, I don't know. But I hope to see you in my next video and I'm wishing you a beautiful and inspiring week. Thank you.